Thank you. And wow. How many of you were at the first Hadoop World that we held here in New York City six years ago? If, if you look actually at the first slide here, you can find a picture of yourself. 480 people that year came together at the Roosevelt Hotel in New York City. And man, it felt like a movement. It was so exciting. We outgrew that space the next year. We had to move uptown a little ways to the Hilton and to the Marriott. And we grew in that space for another four or so years. Last year, it was clear, we working with O'Reilly on Stratacomp plus Hadoop World, it was clear that we weren't going to be able to stay there. This year, almost 5,000 of us are here at the Javits Center. At the Javits! There's no bigger venue for big data in the Big Apple. It feels like we've really arrived, Right? You know, you stop and think about it, and it's the 5,000 of us kind of huddled in a little corner at the Javits, right? This place is absolutely enormous. Six years of growth, six years of progress. We've got plenty of growing still to do, and this space, I think, will give us lots of room to do it. I'm looking forward to returning here every year and and to running this conference now globally with the great folks at O'Reilly. I think there's lots of promise and potential not only for this conference, but for that movement, for this big data technology that we've all been paying attention to now for so long. When I gave the first keynote at a StratiConf event, at a, at a Hadoop World event, I talked about all these geeky projects, Pig and Scoop and Uzi. We, we had to explain the technology because nobody knew what it was. Nobody had heard about this delightful little yellow elephant, really the, the, the center of the ecosystem around which the big data movement's grown, Apache Hadoop. Over the years, we've switched the story we tell. We used to talk about those geeky projects because we had to explain what they were and how they worked. After a couple of years, though, we got to tell stories about what they were doing. I've had a chance to talk about financial markets and fraud detection and better customer engagement and product design by really understanding online behavior. And last year, a fantastic story about how in agriculture, we're turning food, data rather, into food. We're producing more food to feed the planet because we're doing better data analytics. These applications on that knit together platform have started to make big data cool. Last year, I talked about an enterprise data hub, a new concept in the market, one place to land a lot of data, work with it in a bunch of different ways that that could explore and and analyze all that data securely. And that meme has really taken off now. There are lots of people that embrace the notion that there are systems you knit together to, to manage and work with data in powerful new ways. We're able to build really lovely application and tool structures on top of that platform. So what happens next? Well, you know, I think that this year we're going to see Hadoop disappear. It's a pretty ridiculous statement in a venue like this, but bear with me. About a week and a half ago, Cloudera and Teradata made an announcement. We're working together to knit our products together. Teradata talks about a a unified, universal data architecture. Cloudera talks about an enterprise data hub. Teradata is the leader in enterprise data warehouses. We've knit these two systems that provide very powerful, very different data management services into a single framework, secure, able to run way more applications, explore data in way more ways than ever before. That partnership is a great sign of the maturation of the market. The partnership matters a lot to us. I think it matters a lot to our partner, Teradata. Just a couple of days ago, we announced another substantial relationship. EMC, the storage leader, provides Isilon, Really, a petabyte-scale data lake can store huge amounts of data. We've knit that into 
the Enterprise Data Hub framework. You can leave that data in place and now process and analyze it in powerful new ways. That combination unlocks value in data that simply wasn't available before. And I could tell this story over and over and over again. Industry leaders have embraced this platform. We're bringing all these platforms together in an integrated whole so that we can attack those problems. You want to be able to get at data value where it lives. Oracle, SAP, Red Hat, HP have joined that party and many, many other vendors. All of us are platform companies. All of us deliver systems to IT professionals, people who sit in air-conditioned rooms and spend their days staring at screens. Historically, Hadoop was this really complicated piece of technology, and the IT specialists had to custom build applications that ran on it. Now, if you talk to customers of Teradata and EMC and the rest, you'll hear business users get enormous value from those platforms, but have no idea that they're there. Those platforms are foundational. They are buried beneath the applications that sit atop them, and the business users have no idea that they're there. In a really important way, Teradata, EMC, Oracle, the rest, have disappeared. Hadoop is making that transition now. Some of you may have heard of the company Digital Globe. You know them best as the house photographer for Google Earth. About five months ago, the folks at Digital Globe launched a really compelling pro bono data science project. In the wake of the kidnapping of 270 schoolgirls, the murder of 27 of their classmates and teachers in Nigeria by the terrorist group Boko Haram, the Digital Globe team collected satellite imagery of the region analyzed it to find the roads, the clearings, the towns, built models that predicted how the terrorists would move along those corridors and where the girls were likely to be. Now, it's tragic that that crime continues, but Digital Globe was able to recommend to, to the uh, security and government officials responsible 14 locations to look for those girls. And in the short time afterwards, in nine of those locations, actual hostages were cited. So the predictions were good. Think about the application of this technology to the disappearance of an aircraft at sea. Or the progress of a storm across the southeastern United States and our desire to get, to get aid the right kind at the right time to the right place. This is a remarkable application of big data platform, and it's absolutely invisible to the specialists, security and government specialists that use that data. It is invisible. Children's Hospital, I'm sorry, Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, CHOA, operates a network of critical care facilities for children and babies in the Atlanta region. CHOA runs neonatal intensive care units where the job of the doctors is to make sick babies better. Those babies are connected to heart rate monitors and blood pressure monitors. They get blood draws. They are instrumented extensively in real time to monitor their health. That data was too big, too expensive to keep. It was not possible to analyze in large value, volume and in aggregate previously. It's not just that data that matters though. A neonatal ICU is a pretty tough environment. The lights are bright, the noise is terrible, there are whirring and beeping and clicking alarms and systems, doctors and nurses are talking, all of that provides additional stress for the very, very young patients that are being cared for. A team at CHOA deployed this big data technology to collect all of that data, to analyze it, and to correlate it with the improvements in the conditions of their patients, to figure out how all of those readings reflected the progress of the babies in getting better. When they brought that data to the nurses and the doctors 
their jaws dropped. They were able to design and deliver better care because they understood how actions right now affect the outcome of babies later. They were able to aggregate that data in ways that had never before been possible. Now, Digital Globe, CHOA, for-profit agencies, but this movement has leapt from commercial to nonprofits as well. Datakind is a fantastic organization here in New York City, founded by Jake Porway and Drew Conway, that is bringing data science tools and skills to the nonprofit sector, to great organizations like the World Bank and DC Action for Kids, to advance their missions. None of the folks that are relying on this data to do their jobs better needs to know about that foundation. It is invisible, and that is dramatic. We're in a position right now, all of us in this room, to take advantage of that progress. We get to design and build applications on that foundation now that anyone can afford. We don't need custom spec houses built by the IT pros. We've got an opportunity to create tools and applications that satisfy the demands of a market at large. Buyers are ready to adopt those applications on this foundation. Gartner says that 73% of enterprises in the world are using or planning to deploy a big data platform. Those enterprises, by and large, don't want to build custom homes. They don't want to create their own tools and apps. There's an opportunity for all of us to deliver value to them. How much value? I believe that we are participating in the creation of a $1 trillion market. We will create enormously more value than we capture, but data volumes are skyrocketing. At some of our enterprise customers, a factor of 1,000 increase in the data available to them. Put to new uses, explored in new ways, analyzed in the variety of ways that I've described for social good and commercial good, we will create enormously more value. The relational database market today, platforms and then tools and apps on top, is a $100 billion, is a, $100 billion a year market. It stands to reason that the, the value locked up in a thousand times more data will be worth at least 10 times more. We've got an opportunity as a community to build those systems and to deliver them. 73% of enterprises want this stuff. They have come. You should build it. You should build it. Or rather, we should all together build it. We've come an enormous distance in the last six years, from the Roosevelt to the Javits. We're in a position right now where we can expand into this entire space, where we can take over the Javits and, 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 and really demonstrate the progress in the market because of the progress that the technology's made. The platforms that, that we've all helped build, the technology that Doug created on the back of some Google papers in the early part of this century. It has been magnificent to work with many of you for many years in bringing the tools and technology this far. But what's really exciting is the trillion dollar opportunity before us, the chance now to drive these platforms and this technology to absolute ubiquity and to unlock huge new value. I hope that you have a wonderful conference. It's been great working with you so far, and I look forward to the next phase. Thank you.